community at the broadband at the broadband development office and um this this the work that the broadband development office is doing around digital opportunity is really we're a very new office and so the work that we've been doing is really brand new to the state in an aggregated way we know that this work has been happening um in communities for many years. We know that many organizations have been working on digital opportunity work for a long time. And it is an exciting time to be able to work together across the state to bring partners like yourselves together to really try to solve these problems and to really think through how we can most effectively, efficiently, and creatively develop grant programs and funding streams in order to help uplift and augment communities through digital opportunity. So I know that some of you, this might be the first time you're hearing the term digital opportunity, and first, and that's why we're excited to bring this presentation to you today and this discussion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just hand it back over to Deanne because I know we have a lot to go through, and I want know we want to make sure that there's time for questions for you all. I just want to say your your attendance here has been so uh, important and vital, and I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, before we go to the next slide, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Deanne Cuellar. I'm actually based in San Antonio, Texas. I am a fifth generation Texan, I'm native to South Texas. And I also am um, the associate director at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. I'm part of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative team. And I'm so happy that you're here. I agree with everything that Cindy said. Um, we're gonna be going over things that some people know a lot about, but we're also gonna go be going over a couple of ideas that are part of this plan that people might not know about. Uh, but yes, it is really impactful that you're here today. And we hope that this group grows and that we make space for collaboration and co-designing co some of these solutions with you. Next slide, Jordan. To introduction, today's uh, uh, webinar is uh, really designed to talk about the opportunities um, and the challenges that are associated with bridging the digital divide in the state of Texas. And we really want uh, people to understand how they can navigate the different programs that are gonna be coming out of the Texas Broadband Development Office and how you can support these efforts. And I'll start out by saying that one of the common barriers, not to the, the internet, but one of the common barriers for an individual or an organization or a decision maker to get involved with working on connectivity issues is that they think that they need to know a lot about technology. And the truth is the, the overwhelming majority of the people who are working um, as digital navigators and working on the digital divide and digital inclusion efforts happen to be people that don't identify as digital inclusion organizations, but their organizations and their city might be experiencing common barriers that are associated with not being able to access the internet. Next slide. We'll also use today to talk uh, deeply about the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. So if you are not familiar with the TDOP, I will be referring to it as the TDOP throughout this presentation. Really the TDOP is the, is the living document that we need uh, the community to engage with. It is our roadmap for expanding the use of reliable, affordable, high-speed internet access, our device deployment programs, the digital skills training needs within the community. And we're also going to use this roadmap to increase cybersecurity awareness for all Texans. So TDOP is what I'm going to be saying a lot today. And um, after the event today, if you haven't had a chance, please visit the website where the initial uh, proposal is currently posted. Next slide. So one of the one of the things that I just think is interesting about this issue is the difference in the way that we talk about it. So these next three slides, I really want to carve out what I think is a way to break down and demystify that we talk about this issue. The digital divide is the problem when COVID, uh, when the global crisis of COVID happened, you know, around the world, the digital divide became much more apparent because we were all remotely working from home. And some of us had internet access and a lot of us did not have internet access. So the digital divide is actually the folks on the other side who don't have access to all three legs of the stool. It's the problem, it's the issue. It's the gap between the communities and not having the device, 
not having connectivity or not having access to digital uh, skills training, not having um, the device or a high quality device and being able to use all three is what brings an individual small business or organization across the divide. And this map here was updated in September 22nd. It is um, a snapshot of what Harris County looked like in September with the affordable connectivity program. And the parts that are the deepest orange is where the enrollment rates are the highest. Next slide. The work is digital inclusion. So when we're out in the community and we're, we're saying that we're doing, you know, post pandemic recovery work, digital inclusion work, that's the work of actually bringing the connectivity to the community, getting the devices to the individuals and organizations and bringing down the structural barriers or systemic problems that could be causing the, the actual issue, the digital divide. So digital inclusion is the work that is required. It's the strategies and the investments that we're making. It is the projects that we're working on together as institutions and anchor organizations. Digital inclusion is the Senior Planet Program at the Senior Center. It's the, uh, the digital literacy skills training that's available at an incubator program within the library. Um, it's the tablet that goes to the school. So digital inclusion is the, is the way that we fix the digital divide. And this map here was the blue is the same Harris County. And this is a map showing the difference in speed tiers within that, within that community. Next slide. And digital equity is the goal. So the digital equity work when we will know we have reached our goal when we have reached digital equity. So digital opportunity is a condition in which all individuals and communities have the information, technology, capacity necessary for civic and cultural participation, employment, lifelong learning, and access to essential services. So we will know when we have finished working on digital inclusion, when we have reached their digital opportunity phase um, within our state of Texas. And this map right here is from our ACP dashboard. And it shows the darkest colors are the colors where there's the highest enrollment throughout the country. And the lighter colors show where there's like lower rates of enrollment. So the future, if we've reached a digital opportunity for the entire country, not only our state, this, this map would be all bright red. Next slide. So if you've had a chance or you have not had a chance to look at the TDOP, within the initial proposal of the TDOP, if you go through, there is different findings from of different demographics that were surveyed during the initial process. This chart, it does not go into the full detail or the granular numbers or percentages of, what, of the findings. What we did instead is we wanted to make sure that you understood the demographics. These are the covered populations that were surveyed. These are also the covered populations that are listed in the Digital Equity Act. And over to the right side of your screen is, um, is basically a blurb from the findings of what the primary barriers to the internet access was. And the reason why we put them side by side is that we wanted you to see that the cover populations shared many of the same common barriers. So you'll see um, on more than one population that cost and affordability and devices, basically the same three legs of the stool that we mentioned again and again, that is the cause for the digital divide were listed as common barriers for these covered populations. Um, I again would say to please pivot to the ET dot plan and download a copy. It's within those findings that you can also offer comment if you work with any of these covered populations. I hope that you've also shared that in the chat today because we'd love to learn more about the organizations in the communities that are directly working with these cover populations within the Digital Equity Act. Next slide. Here we're gonna go into the federal funding programs. This is where I'm gonna do my best, not as a policymaker or as, um, as a researcher to describe the federal funding programs. What we really wanted to do today when we talked about the BEAD, uh, the BEAD and the DEA is that we made sure that all of you on this call understood the, this, the very huge differences between the BEAD and the Digital Equity Act. And BEAD, if you're not looking at your screen, is the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program, also known as BEAD, B-E-A-D. BEAD 
The BEAD program is the um, is the is the part of the program where there's work currently underway or being planned within the state of Texas. It focused primarily on the infrastructure within the state, the actual building of broadband and internet access throughout communities, what the actual uh, physical uh, in, uh, deployment of construction projects that are laying fire, pulling fiber, or updating the fiber within their community. The, um, the BEAD program is something that the Texas Broadband Develop Office had to participate in in order to satisfy one of the requirements with the NTIA. The NTIA is known as the National Telecommunications and Information Administration. Once the NTIA is satisfied with the first part and the second part of our proposal, Texas will begin the next step of the process with the BEAD challenge process and the sub-grantee selection process. And I would refer to the Texas Broadband Development Office's BEAD page. There's a, there's a page specifically on the BEAD program that has dates that you should be aware of and the application process. And there's a newsletter you can sign up with uh, so that you can stay in constant communications with the office. And all questions about the BEAD and the Broadband Development Office should, there should go directly to the Texas Broadband Development Office. We are hopeful that this process will be, will, will possibly start in the spring of 2024. Any leftover funds that will be, uh, will be used to support the digital opportunity programs and uh, beginning with what's outlined in the TDOB. The BDO does not expect any leftover funds from the BEEP sub grantee process. Um, below is a timeline that ILSR has created about this process here in Texas. This is a proposed timeline from us but you should only refer to the, the timeline that comes out directly from the BDO office. Those are the dates, those are the official dates of this process. Next slide. The next part of the federal funding program that we wanna have a deeper discussion on is the Digital Equity Act. The, the Digital Equity Act provides funding for digital literacy programs, device deployment programs, and cybersecurity awareness programs. The Texas Digital Opportunity Plan, which is the core of today's webinar, is funded through the DEA, the Digital Equity Act. And funding for a state funding program and a nationwide competitive grant will open up to support these projects that address skills, access, affordability gaps for historically marginalized communities within the state of Texas. Again, we've included a timeline uh, but this is a proposed timeline. Um, always refer to the Texas Broadband Developed Offices page. Uh, like the BEAD program, there is also a page on the Texas BDO's website specifically for updates related to the Digital Equity Act and the dates relevant to that and any, um, any uh, due dates or guidelines that you should be uh, aware of as it relates to any of the application processes or programs that will be coming up. Next slide. Another popular federal program right now that many of you on this call might be working on or might, might be aware of is the Affordable Connectivity Program, also known as the ACP. The ACP program is, is currently still available within the United States. 42% of the communities throughout the United States qualify for that program. ILSR has created a dashboard. It's at acp-dashboard.com. This interactive dashboard is pulls the public data every two weeks. It's updated every two weeks so that you can look at the enrollment rates down to the zip code in your community. You can look at the entire state of Texas enrollment program. You can go down to your county. For example, I'm in Barrow County and you can look at the enrollment rates in Barrow County. And then we've also gone as far as to list like uh, the top metro areas to see, so that you can compare, if you're in a metro area, you can compare your metro area to other areas. This map has been really impactful in communities across geographies, because if you are currently doing enrollment programs around ACP, you can look at your area of your county or the area of your state to see where enrollment levels are high or low. And then you, if you need to, you can, um, you can direct your enrollment efforts towards the areas of the state where the enrollment's low. There is also in this presentation a link to a community guide to federal broadband funding opportunities that ILSR has created. It's a live website 
on our homepage where we try to update the information as much as possible. Uh, we are also available for questions about the guide. There's an email address there of the author if you'd like to reach out to them. It is compiled and worked on between our communications team and our research team. And then we've also shared something that a resource from Common Sense Media that goes all the way back to when these different funding uh, streams were created. That is a PDF that's really easy to read. It's really constant comprehensive. You can see that my screenshot is actually quite small because there, there are so many different streams of federal funding to stay updated with. But if you're able to click over to this uh, to this matrix, you can go down through the different federal programs and what they're uh, what they're used for. And they're commonly spread out across um, accessibility devices and other types of programs as it's related to um, the digital divide and digital inclusion work. Next slide. So now we're gonna move into the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan, the TDOP. Next slide, Jordan. We're gonna to start today with the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan goals. The Texas Broadband Development Office, the BDO, has set five goals that align with NTIA's measurable objective categories. The, NDIA, the NTIA had different categories that we had to create goals within, and these are the NTIA measurable objectives on the left side of the screen. You can see that to the right of the screen, we have the goals that Texas has set for us within the, um, our plan and our strategies. So if you go down to digital literacy, you'll see that the goal for here in Texas is that all Texans have a broad foundation of digital literacy skills and access to a con continuum of digital skills development and programs. And then if you were also to look at any of the other measurable objectives, for, for example, broadband availability or affordability, you'll see that the Texas goal is to expand adoption of reliable, affordable broadband internet service at home for all. So if you go through each measurable objective, and you go down each Texas goal, these are, we, there are shared goals. Like these are the goals that we share as a state. This is why when the main, this is gonna be one of the reasons for this presentation, we'll have others of why we need everybody from the volunteers to the homeowner, to the decision makers, elected leaders, people and organizations, all stakeholders, those who don't identify as stakeholders to engage with the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan because these goals impact every Texan throughout the state. So the more people that engage with the public comment, the more Texans that get to shape and co-design the solutions that, that will be the outcomes from these goals. It will also let us know if you provide public comment what's, what's missing in the, in the goals if something has been missed in the initial proposal. So really feel free to go through the measurable objectives, review the Texas goals, and please offer public comment in all or any of these sections. Next slide. They are also in the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. You are going to find strategies that the plan has outlined to address these goals or how they we the uh, how we the state of Texas envision addressing and um, reaching our goals our shared goals the BDO anticipates following for the following four primary strategies and these are outlined uh, in the digital opportunity plan and these are the strategies that we think will get us from um, from initiating the plan to achieving the plan that is one to partner with and fund statewide organizations fund local partners, promote internet adoption at the highest levels throughout communities, and maintain a living digital opportunity plan. Next slide. Please mark down on your calendars or please make a note right now that January 5th, 2024, well, I should note that the Texas Broadband Development Office has very had very little uh, control over this very short runway uh, to re to return kind of public comments or to engage with you all and us in the community to get public comments. The comment period opened up in November, but unfortunately, um, the due date for public comments is January fifth which is why more than ever, we need your voices. We need your newsletter lists. We need your visibility within the community on social media to be asking the community to engage with public comment and to get their public comments in. Um, 
January 5th, 2024 is right around the, the corner. We understand that, but we're going to do our best to work with you all to get this information out. I'm going to go through the purpose of the public comment. The NTIA requires the state of Texas or all states to hold public comment periods to engage with residents. This is why we're having this meeting today and organizations because it's integral, it's integral for y'all's feedback to be a part and incorporated into the digital opportunity plan. This is a step in the planning process that we in the state of Texas cannot um, skip. Um, all states are going through this period where they're asking for uh, public comment. Some have moved through that public comment period, but all of them had to, all states that receives this funding or in, interacts with this funding, had to get public comment and incorporate public comment and public engagement into their plans. The goals of the public comment is to help refine and improve upon the plan for you within the community and as a decision maker to su suggest changes you would like to see in the document. It's also for where you can share where your organization could be helpful in implementation. If you're an organization that currently offers a digital skills or a device deployment program, or if you're an organization that thinks that uh, device deployment and working on the digital divide could be part of your mission and vision of your organization, this is where you would provide information um, in the public comment to the TDOP in our plan. And we want to correct the, uh, the record if needed. So what we mean by that is that um, if, if, if several people, if, if we did not get a lot of public comments um, from the community, we, and this is hard to do, like how do you reach people that are not on the internet to engage with that? But those of us who are working with those communities, it would signal to uh, to the people who work on this work that we, the state of Texas, don't share the same goals. Um, we need to comment as much as possible because the lack of comment also could um, could signal that the that this issue is not important to the state of Texas. When both are true and both are facts, the the shared goals outlined in this document are shared goals that many people have been listing for years around this issue, and um, the communities, communities, urban, rural, and in between markets, Texans statewide share uh, um, care about connectivity, and they care about every Texan and every small business being connected. So once again, I'm going to be a broken record. The BDO is accepting public comments through January 5th, 2024. Next slide. There are many ways that you and the community could um, lend your voice and lend your capacity to help us uh, get the word out. First of all, the public comment is open to all Texas, and the BDO is especially looking for residents of local residents, like the individuals I mentioned, those in local government, community-based organizations, and others to provide feedback. So if you're working with any of those covered populations that were mentioned a few slides back, or if you identify as one of those individuals um, listed in the covered populations, the BDO is especially looking for public comment from you as an individual. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, they're the key performance indicators will track the progress of the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. There will be metrics associated with the success. There will be updates on whether or not we are tracking towards success of achieving the, um, achieving the goals that are outlined and if the strategies are successful within the final plan. And the implementation strategies are, uh, are potential thoughts on how to implement the state digital equity capacity grant funding program. Next slide. If you're not aware, the, T the BDO has created a toolkit, the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan Public Comment Partner Toolkit. That toolkit is available online or um, it's available if you email the office, I'll provide a copy. You can also download and review a draft of the TDOP at www.broadbandfortexas.com slash TDOP. And if you're interested, you can explore the NTI funding program directory at this link, internetforall.gov slash programs. The partner toolkit, I should note, is uh, uh, although it's available online, it comes with different examples of different language 
on how to reach communities. There's many templates for uh, social media, letters, uh, copy that's already been created that can be customized into the voice of your organization or leadership. Next slide. I can't believe we made it, folks. Okay, so we're going to stop recording now because we want to open up this space for a Q&A session. I will go let you know real quick, level set, how we're going to do this. We're going to ask that you all put your questions in the chat. We have several moderators on the call today and they will be helping us grab those questions. And then we're going to answer them as, um, as much as possible. But before, um, before we... Uh, start the Q&A session, we're going to ask that you all um, visit this website. If I can get somebody to grab that link and drop it in the chat for us, please grab this link today before we open up the Q&A session. We want y'all just to take a few seconds to click on over and download the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. And we're going to encourage you again to please submit your public comment. <laughs> 